Hello everybody and welcome back to our Chia world. <laughs> yeah, it all started as a lockdown project where I listened to my son's suggestions that we could do something on YouTube and he wanted to do some of his Minecraft and I could do some stuff as well. So now I'm pretty excited with it. And obviously my son is not so much interested anymore. <laughs> but anyway, it is like with the pets, you end up taking the dog outside because they wanted it so much, but they don't want to do the work. But yeah, today we will have a look at printing with Linux and we will have a look how stable the system is now. But beforehand we will have a look at what is going on. So I have just fired up the second server and you can see it is still sinking but it should be pretty quick I have had a suggestion yesterday that you can extract the file with the stored hosts and put it on a USB stick so I will have a look at that if that really works because with ever more nodes in the system we will have ever more problems syncing and you can see the syncing has a, an impact on my response times as well but they will not be that good anyway because at the moment we are running eight servers and that has an impact on the response times on the network as well eight servers plus two pcs yeah that's a lot of traffic on our internal network and I expect them to go up slightly. The other problem we are having is we have started to take our machines apart and unfortunately the Phonic fiber optic card is overheating at the moment. So the server we wanted to fix it with might not be the best of all choices so we will have to have a look at of our infrastructure allocation how we want to do it but apart from that we are pretty happy you can see the increase in network space is very small compared to what we had over the last week and I can, I could see that there were some whales trying to test their systems as you could see a huge fluctuation in network space yesterday night and this morning. So I'm not convinced that this is the end of the growth. I'm more thinking about a lot of the people with huge network infrastructure and server farms are just testing out the system anyway to decide if it is worth going there I mean you would not dedicate 50 or 100 thousand of hardware to a project which is bound to fail so they are probably doing exactly the same as I do testing and seeing how it works and then 
probably or not go into it. So that is what we have observed. So we are at 10.4 exabyte right now. We have seen 10.6 at a time. So there must be somebody testing a real huge farm. But we will see how it works out. So we have the share price as uh, a coin price in a perfect sideways formation now. You've seen we come we came out of the going formation with a spike hitting the 900 and ever since we have gone down to 780 so it's in a corridor between 600 uh, yeah it's now in a corridor between 600 and 900 and we will see how far this sideways movement will go but if you see that line then you can see we are still on the downward trajectory that is still valid so I will expect another test of the $600 mark and then we will see if we can if the price for the coin stays above the $600 marks yeah it is pretty stable so I have done some preparation for the for the U for the Ubuntu printing but before we start with the Ubuntu printing process no I can't I, I, I initially wanted to start a plot now but I think I will just wait until the second node is fully fully synced so I can do some some stuff beforehand before I want to so I will use tmux on Linux and this is a very old block but I it's still the best which I think is out there and it gives you an indication how long I've, I'm using it so we are at tmux with version 3. Point something now I think and that is an equivalent to screen which you might have heard of but I'm really I've never been happy with screen yeah I'm I just thought about how old I am the last time I remember that we had a May as cold as this year was in 1962 I remember it very much because it was the first time I experienced snow in the middle of May and this year is almost as bad as 1962 when I was a child I had to do the snow plowing <laughs> and that was the only time I ever had to plow snow in May and this year is almost as bad. Yeah, so a quick and easy guide to Tmux, and he will, Ham Fokker, will introduce you to Tmux and how to work with it. And you will see, yeah, unfortunately, I can't. I, I'm not at my usual workspace, so we are at the testing server at the moment, which is constantly being ripped apart. So I don't have a working environment for Tmux, but you can see 
when you read through his blog what is possible and what you can do with it. It's a really handy tool. And also a list of plotting performance tweaks, which is pretty up to date. And I have taken everything into account, which is on here with the setup. But I do not uh, turn off the journaling, even though it's stated here that it hasn't doesn't have an impact for for cheer. But I don't like it. It's not a safety thing, a safe thing to do, though. And of course, we have the GitHub guide for plots and there we have a lot of examples of what you want or not what you don't want to do. So those are the resources I will use. I have already started the environment and I have also already started the different windows we will use. So the different virtual terminals we will use with tmux. Now let's have a look if our second server is, uh, is at a hundred percent but not fully synced so that will only take a few seconds. Hopefully. Otherwise I will run out of things to tell. Oh, we are already moving on with our fortune. We are at ten hundred thousands, ten thousand. We already own a hundred thousands of a cheer, which will bring us into the penny area. So come on, sweetheart. Yes, we are fully synced. Okay. Now we can start the plot job on the we want to test the system and that means we have to put some load on it. So just let's start a plot. We will just do it go easy on it. So we will start one plot only and we want only one queue so the maximum RAM recommended is <coughs> 8000 the maximum number of threads is 4 and the adequate number for 8000 RAM is 64 buckets. Let's give it 8800, that is for four each. And probably we can give it five threads just to... If you go above six, you will see a decrease in time. Uh, an increase in time, so it's not recommended to go above six. So six is the highest number you should choose. If you go above that, then you will see, uh, I mean, we have 28, uh, 24 threads on this 
So we could easily plot a few more, but I don't want to do it at the moment. So now we are looking for our temporary directory, which is that one. And I have excluded the final directory from the printing. So that's our final directory. Because the printer doesn't need to know, the farmer doesn't need to know, we will see when it's ready. It turns up anyway, because it's our print directory. So now we will start the plot. And we will finish this the terminal session. Yeah, we don't need it anymore. We don't want to do anything on that one. Good. So now our plot stuck. No, plotting. That was really harsh. Okay, so now we are plotting. The response time should come down as all the syncing is completed. And now we can walk onto our onto our Unix machine. Why use Tmux? Tmux is your safety belt because it prevents you from uh, killing the process in the uh, if you lose connection to your to your server so the process will run in a virtual terminal which is independent from what your terminal on your main on your on your remote machine is otherwise you would just kill the process on the server so this is a headless ubuntu machine with 60 60 plus gig of ram 24 threads so it should be okay for testing it has a four NIC, four port net, NIC network interface cable, so it should be fine. So what we are doing is we are setting up our print. Command. And we will just take one of the, yep, we take that one. That's a good one. And we will just change it into what we need. Okay, give it a go. <clears throat> so our our print path is exactly Final, so that is fine. <laughs> okay, and that is oh, that is not right. Yet. What am I doing? Oh, what am I doing wrong? We are just let's see just my keyboard or is it oh we are stuck okay ah there we are yeah it's it's a keyboard it's a wireless keyboard and somehow the batteries are not the best anymore okay so that is GIA Ah, 
good. <laughs> now I have to go back to the terminal. Good, here we are. No. Nope. Here we are. So that is Chia. And that is. Our home directory. Check. So that's the final destination. That's the temporary de destination. Yep. Easy peasy. Chia. So home directory, Check. so we are done. So that's the temporary directory. So we want 64 buckets, that's true. But we want four threads, no, five. Five threads, number of threads. We need 6,000. 6,600 megabyte of RAM. Gigabyte, yeah, 6,600 megabyte of RAM. But we only want to plot a K32, and we don't want to plot the old fashioned way, but we want to exclude the the Final directory. So if you want to do more than one plot, then you have to do the N as well so that you can start your your oh, sorry, your parallel plots. Good. That looks good. So we are creating a K32 plot with a hundred mega gigabyte of size. We don't want to include the final directory in the path of the harvester, and because it is doing exactly nothing at the moment anyway. We have a memory size of 6,600 allocated. We have five threads and 64 buckets. Our temporary directory is Chia temp and our final directory is Chia final. Okay, so that should work. Let's give it a go. Here we go. No. We did it. So now we go into our prepared prepared next window. As you see, there's no plot there. And now we can just start the harvester. Harvester, and you will see we have a bad bug in the in the harvester. Okay, so if we grab the harvester, where is it? Yep, and 
yeah, yeah, let's see. So it's one forty eight now, and the last error message is from three thirty six. So that looks pretty good. Seems we have overcome the the error. Let's see again. That would be great. We worked pretty, yeah, we worked a lot on it, so it seems to have been working good. And now all we need to do is start the start the dashboard good and now we should see everything on our GIA dashboard let's see where we are takes a while it needs to be fully synchronized as well before you can see anything Oh, there he is. Good. Connected. But we will not see the plot on the Ubuntu, Ubuntu machine. So that is all you need to know about plotting with Windows. Uh, with, <laughs> with Ubuntu, you see the, the response time is going down. We are plotting on two machines now and it won't make a difference, not much of a difference, if you plot on two or if you plot on ten machines and even if you plot single or parallel won't make any difference. If you set your farm up like that and as you can see our sync time is pretty low because we have always one node which is up to scratch. So this node is connected via the via the peer tab. You can also connect them permanently with a script. So we should, you can see it here in your in your window, and here we have an overview. So you need to two things I would advise advise you to do is to connect to your right peer group. So you you can find it on the Shia website. There's a <coughs> There's a page which shows you how to deal with response times and there you can see the different setups for for the to set up your machine your peer group properly and that is a huge list of connections we have now and that is also, at some point, you have to curb it because it is also driving your response times down because of the sheer volume of network traffic it generates. So here we are, that's the connection to our peer. And from that peer, there's the same connection in, in its window and there you would see that you have a lot more of download and that's why it's so pretty fast dating up it has been more than two and a half thousand 
appears. So within the last eight hours, we have two, two and a half thousand more. You can see the fluctuation in the network is really big. So that is not 10.4 anymore as it was when we started. So it's 10.3.4. So that is 51 petabyte less than it was a few minutes ago. And that is one huge farm which has just gone off. Okay, so that is plotting with Unix. We will see how our plot affairs. Let's go to the plotting window. So that is the original Tmux window and then you can just move on from one to the other. Okay, that is one which ha I had originally <laughs> opened, just I have opened four, even though I didn't want to use it, so we will, I mean, it's anyway, it's not the full hash code, so it doesn't matter very much. So it is printing. It is printing a plot thirty two and using sixty four buckets, five threads, and six thousand six hundred of gigabyte of RAM. So fine, everything is working. And yeah, as you can see, the impact on the system is zero. Basically, response times are not too bad. Everything is fine. And that would be the same if we print parallel or if we print on another two servers. So this is an, just a simple SAS disk, no fancy SSD. We are not wasting any money and we already have 2%, 2%. Yeah, it plot lasts about eight hours. Eight. Yeah, we, we tried one yesterday with, where we just went over the top with the threads and the memory and everything. And I can tell you, uh, greed isn't good. <laughs> no, uh, my colleague just wanted to know if how it works. I mean, there's a lot of documentation on the network where you can see that it doesn't help to improve the the amounts uh, to to increase the amounts of money and uh, resources you put into it. But he just wanted to know, so he went with I think he went in with twelve threads and. 35 gigabyte of RAM or something like that and the outcome was that uh, the the plot the plot was finalized after 14 hours so yeah don't don't do it stick stick to the experience which is shared on the net and 
Yeah, you will see. So here you see we have 80 connections in our, yeah, we have set it to 100 connections to see if we can improve the, the, the response time for the, for the uh, syncing. That obviously does the trick, but on the other hand, you are experienced seeing a whole lot of network traffic and you're going down with your actual response time for the farm. So that is also something which is not very advisable. Just keep it down. Well, if you have a farmer which is exactly running nothing, like this one here, you might as well keep it, it doesn't matter because this farmer is not involved in any other process at all, it's just keeping the connection to the to the internet, to the main net. And that is just our fallback if one of them packs in, we always have another one which is up to date. So as you can see we have ripped the server apart, so that's why we needed to sync it again. And we will now find a solution why our our four port fiber optic card is roasting itself. I very much think it's just the case. I think it's too small of a case to put it in there. It's just not enough airflow for the card. We will see. It's a it's a DL, which is basically a 2U, and I think we need a 4U case to put the, put it into there. Okay, so that was printing on Unix. I hope you enjoyed and had a lot of fun. As we did. No, it's not funny, is it? <laughs> but it is exciting in a way. Good, yeah, we we are looking into it now. We have put some drives aside so that we have a total of 48 terabyte of network of, of space for our final plots and we are also looking at 28 terabyte of intermediate storage and yeah another 20 we have available on our network so we have almost 50% of the recommended space. Yep, good. I'm happy with that. So what you see is you will always have, that's what I said two days ago, everything is fine as you don't need to intervene manually. The moment you have to do anything on it, it just goes bang. There is nothing, there's no fallback mechanism, there's no, no self-healing in the system. It, if you have to intervene, then you are most likely to drive up your response times, no matter what your setup is. Everything is so intervened that if you fiddle on one machine, it will have an impact impact on the others. As long as you're not plotting without any network. I mean, you, you can do that as well. You can put your plotters in an endless loop and then just plot and plot and plot. And there's also a shell script on the, on the web. If you look for it, uh, you will find it where you can uh, copy your plotted, your, your 
final plots into uh, a storage over the network but yeah that is also it's a valid valid approach so you can just run your plotter on dedicated servers I mean uh, a simple a simple generation 5 HP server would do I guess question if, if, if the electricity Oh, you can, you can, no, no it, might, it might not be worth it. So you, you probably need a generation six server as, as the lowest option. So if you, if you just fit a generation six server with all the memory you can get and the highest, and the highest core version which fits into it, then it might just print about 15, 15 to 20 a day if you run it in plotter mode only and without any network interference and if you then attach it via a cable to a to a storage box well, so the storage box would have the network connection and the plotter would just shovel the ready printed far, uh, plots on it. It didn't even need a network cable, so you could just run it <laughs> on infinity. Okay, so thanks for watching. Let's see how the network, yep, we are testing, we are going down now. We are testing the 600 again by probably Let's see, hmm. tomorrow latest, it looks like, no, I'm not, it's not a glass bowl, but you can see it is still on the downward tra trajectory pretty much. The galving is done, we didn't have the spike as here, we just had the attempt of cracking the 900, didn't work, so it immediately fall back falls back to the 800 and then we will probably see the side, sideways movement like it was here we had a prolonged period of sideways movement and that is probably the same what is happening again but it all depends very much on how the network will work over the na over the next few days. I guess if the farming, if the pooling starts, and what the impact of the pooling on the overall network will be. We have. Let's see. We have 10.34. So we have around about 10 to since yesterday evening. So the, the increase is absolutely So yeah, so we have 10.40, around about 10.40 between 10. 10.20 and 10.60 since yesterday evening. So basically the net space has not improved since yesterday evening as much as it did. But if the, if the price for the coin stays where it is and if the project actually goes into the next phase with plotting enabled, there might be some movement and if it doesn't then there might be some movement as well okay so everything is according to plan and we will try to fix our fiber optic cable problem and then we are back and i can 
tell you from what we did off screen that uh, it doesn't matter with the response times if you put more farmers and plotters on it. You can run eight plotters without any without any problems on the on the response times. Good. Please like and subscribe if it was helpful to you. And the next thing will be coming up with our temporary storage solution. And yeah, that depends very much on how the farming thing works and how the and how the the how the uh, future development of the coin price is. Good. That will decide if we actually dedicate the resources to it that it needs. So we're speaking about 100 terabyte of capacity and that is obviously A huge decision to make because that would mean a commitment for about a year or two with all the stuff involved with all the time so the man hours the costs for adding the discs so to keep up with the Joneses we would need to put in one or two 24 terabyte disks every week. No, every every three weeks, I guess. But anyway, uh, they are not so easy to obtain at the moment. So that's why we relay. One of the points why we relay the start is if we want to print sustainable, then we need to have a sustainable supply of hard disks at predictable prices and that is just not in at the moment so we are not that's one of the decisions why we are not doing it okay so please like and subscribe have a wonderful day and see you again in a few days i will make some more content about home office security but we will not come back apart from some price and network growth uh, remarks but we will not focus on the chia project at the moment for the next three or four days until we have set up our fiber optic network for the chia testnet so it runs stable thank you very much and please like and subscribe and as i said have a very very good day